I had a dream years ago to build the world's first real power loader from the movie Aliens. There have been setbacks, but we're finally set up in this fantastic facility, we have an amazing team, and we have some awesome sponsors on board, which means there's nothing stopping us from building it. This video is sponsored by World of Tanks, a free-to-play game with over 100 million players. New players can use my code TANKMANIA to get some awesome bonuses. The Power Loader, the project that has started and stopped more times than I care to count. There have been setbacks, from financial issues to scheduling, but we choose to build the Power Loader in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one we are willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. Seriously though, this project is quite the endeavor, which is probably why no one else has attempted it ever before. One of the biggest questions was, how are we gonna do the base? The way the legs were designed in the movie meant the power loader had a super high center of gravity, and if it picked up anything, or even tried to take a step, it would definitely fall over. The reason it didn't in the movie was because it was made of foam, had counterweights, had a person inside of it controlling it, and the whole thing was suspended by wires like a marionette, aka it was completely fake. You see, the funny thing is, James Cameron actually intended the power loader to have four legs, which would actually be possible to do in real life. But when The Empire Strikes Back came out in 1980, Cameron decided the power loader would look too similar to an AT-AT walker, and they redesigned the power loader completely to be a bipedal machine. So legs are out. Tank treads, like the militarized version of the power loader, were in. But where do we get treads strong enough to hold a 5,000 pound plus vehicle? We had to take a look at the construction vehicles. And what better heavy duty construction equipment company than Caterpillar themselves, the actual manufacturer of the P5000 power loader in the future. Luckily, during my trip to BC this summer to drive the Furion Robotics racing mech, Jonathan Tibbet introduced me to this guy, Robert, who introduced me to someone else by email, who introduced me to someone else, who introduced me to someone else, who introduced me to Archie, who is the global brand creative director at Caterpillar, the guy responsible for the amazing cat trial videos on YouTube, where full-size construction equipment competes in unique and awesome ways. Who, when hearing about our plan to make a real-life power loader from aliens, was in, 110%. So he's invited us to visit a local Caterpillar dealer and see if we can't find a compact track loader that's going to work for our project. So we're here at our local Caterpillar dealer, Battlefield Equipment Rentals, and we're going to look at some compact track loaders for our Aliens Power Loader project. Hey Rob, so on our YouTube channel called The Hacksmith, we have a series called Make It Real, where we take fictional ideas from comics, movies, and video games, and try and make real working prototypes. One of our biggest projects to date is the Aliens Power Loader build. As you know, in the Aliens franchise, it's actually made by Caterpillar in the year 2100. So we were super excited when Caterpillar offered to partner with us on this project, and invited us to come down to our local dealer, with you, to take a look at some machines. Thanks for coming in, guys. I'm super excited around here. If you'd like, we can show you a couple of machines in the yard that actually might represent what might work for you. Sure, let's do it. All right, guys, I'm gonna start with a few of the models that we have here to offer at Caterpillar. This here, we talked about horsepower and high flow. The 262 skid steer, this has XPS. Tremendous machine for lots of different applications in construction and landscaping and so on. Size-wise, are we heading in the right direction? Oh yeah, this is pretty awesome. I really like those specs. I do think we want to go with the tracks just for that lower ground pressure and you know, so we make sure we can go off-roading and they look way cooler than tires. All right, we'll, we'll work towards the track machines here. In our track machine, this is the biggest. This is the great Gusto. It's the 299 D3XE, 40 gallons a minute, 4,000 PSI. This thing is a monster. The cab, everything's identical, like I said before, and the horsepower per rating is actually the same on the smaller model. The numbers are great, but I think that we need something a little bit smaller. We want to make sure we got that reach in front of us, right? So we want to make sure we can clear the tracks. We want to make sure we got the reach on the sides as well. The engine of this one is a little bit taller and a little bit higher off the ground. We might have some uh, elbow clearance issues if we go with something that, uh, this big. Do you got anything smaller? I'm thinking the 239 is the best idea because you get the same amount of powertrain, horsepower, and ground footprint but less machine to push around, which gives you the power you need, should be a winner. Now that Rob's taking us through the machines, it sounds like the 239 is perfect for our application. 
It's got the right load capacity, it's got lots of horsepower, lots of flow, and it's got the clearance that we need for the power loader elbows. What do you say, let's pack it up? Let's get her going. Awesome. Much like Caterpillar's selection of construction equipment, World of Tanks has a huge arsenal of vehicles, including artillery, light tanks to heavy tanks. There's over 550 tanks to try out, ensuring a new way to play every time. Try World of Tanks today using my link below, and you'll be helping to support this power loader project by doing so. All right, so the guys at Battlefield Equipment Rentals also showed me how to drive this machine. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to drive the Caterpillar Compact Track Loader. Step one, seat belt. Step two, safety bars. Time to put the key in. First, turn it to the on position. The screen will turn on, and once it's loaded up, we're ready to turn on the ignition. Next up, we turn off the parking brake. All right, so now that the machine's on, we can start using these joysticks. The left joystick controls the drive system. So if you push it forwards, the machine goes forwards. If you push it back, we go backwards. If you turn it like this, it steers like a tank. Now the other joystick's the fun one. This one controls the boom arm. Simply pull it back to lift up, push it forwards to go down. Now we don't have a bucket installed on this, but if we turn it left, we turn it right, it tips, and we turn it left, it pulls it back up. Now that might seem a bit slow, so we turn up the throttle. Besides the throttle adjustment, there's also a gas pedal. Also got our headlight controls, and we can lock out the hydraulic system. We've also got a great rear view mirror, which lets you see all around the Caterpillar. Anyway, I think that's about it. It's time to let Bogdan play with it. Imagine me and you, I do. The system we chose has a 67.1 horsepower diesel engine capable of putting out up to 26 gallons per minute of hydraulic flow at over 3,300 PSI. It's got a tipping load of over 4,000 pounds and it's capable of traveling up to 7.6 miles per hour. The low ground pressure of only 5.4 pounds per square inch and its performance tune suspension are awesome. And the low ground clearance and shoulder clearance will be perfect for our power loader. We just gotta figure out how we're gonna mount the power loader onto it. Here's a model of the current upper body. The plan is basically to strip down the Caterpillar until it's only the tracks and the engine bay. Then we have to build a support structure to act as the legs and be able to support the entire weight of the upper body. Finally, we have to put together the cockpit to allow the driver to control the whole thing. But before we get too caught up with the numbers and all this design, I really want to see this thing move. So to do that, let's start off with a shopping trip. Unfortunately, the type of hydraulic oil we use for testing our power loader is not the same type of oil that Caterpillar uses in their machines, which means we need to drain the entire system, flush the whole thing, and replace it with the same type of hydraulic oil that Caterpillar uses. Let's do that. Now 
Now that we've switched the oil in our power loader, it's time to do a side-by-side -side comparison to show you just how much more flow the Caterpillar has than our old pump. I'm excited for this. Time to see what the track loader can do. It's honestly pretty ridiculous just how fast our power loader is with the new cat, which means it's time to strip it all down so that we can mount this. We'll have to start off by removing both of these arms along with the hydraulics and the safety interlocks. And uh, we'll need to remove the bushings as well. This entire cabin will have to be removed, but we gotta make sure to keep all the electronics. Well, this entire front plate's gonna have to come off and we'll have to relocate these. Okay, well, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. You do realize it's just me, right? We might need some help from the team. Oh, there's the first two pieces of the Caterpillar. A couple of thousand more to go. compact track loader makes me kind of feel like a real tank commander but if you guys want to feel like a real tank commander try world of tanks today you'll be able to take your tank for a rip across the open fields climb steep hills tear across the desert and bring on battle in industrial zones there are over 40 battle arenas to choose from team up your friends and destroy the competition <laughs> Huge thank you to Caterpillar for giving us this compact track loader. The team did a fantastic job taking it apart and making sure it still works. On the next episode, hopefully we'll finish that design and start manufacturing. And if we're lucky, that means we're gonna be able to mount the power loader on top of the compact track loader for the very first time. I am so excited.